Please consider becoming a patron of Myth Vision Podcast. You'll get early access to every video, including this amazing one. And you can ask me personal questions, private message me, anything you'd like. Professor Joel Baden, author of many books. Everybody needs to go check them out, of course. Got another question from a Patreon member, VK Daman, and he says, ask Dr. Baden to rank these explanations of Ham's sin in order of plausibility. Ham's sin was A, paternal incest, B, maternal incest, C, castration of Noah, or D, mocking Noah. Uh, the, f the mocking Noah is the most likely and all the rest of them are not, are, are bonkers, right? Like, uh, they're all over readings. I, it, the, I think it's entirely, entirely about, uh, parental re paternal respect, right? Uh, yeah, I, we have a tendency to want to read euphemisms and like, uh, you know, like, uh, naughty things into like all kinds of uh, corners of the, of the Bible. It's there in plenty of places. I mean, there are euphemisms and uh, there are places where often we don't think about like what may be happening, you know, like Abraham says to his servant, put your hand under my thigh and swear. And I don't think thigh means thigh there, right? Like, <laughs> okay, like, uh, or, you know, Ruth uncovers Boaz's feet. I don't think feet means feet there, right? Like, so there are euphemisms, there are expressions, but you know, uh, and this is a case where, uh, I think it's really just like Noah got drunk and passed out and his son came in and was like, Hey guys, check it out. Dad's like drunk and naked. And like, that's just a violation of basic respecting of your parents, um, and respecting of elders was like, could not be a more important value at that time and place. And I think that's the, I think it's the only explanation that holds any water. And I think all the other attempts to make it into something bigger than that. Have you heard of all the different? Uh, I, I don't think I'd heard the castration one. So the castration one, from what I understand, and I could be way off here, but I think it's more of like a common mythos that there's another deity. Uh, I don't know if it's Addis or what it might be. I can't remember, but the he gets castrated by his son and some type of paternal. Yeah, it's like son. a whole. It's a whole Oedipal thing. I don't think. I don't think so. I right. don't think so. I think it's. Um, I think it's exactly what it. I think it's basically exactly what it says. It's just, it's just, uh, you know, filial respect for the parent and um, yeah. So then that, that begs a question, right? In light of what you're, what you're saying here, um, the curse that obviously is being put upon him, people will blow it up even bigger than maybe what, I mean, it, it's definitely not good. I'm not trying to like downplay that it's a, like, this isn't that bad, but when people talk about a curse, they think eternal, like there's this like, oh my gosh, doom and gloom idea. He just disrespected his father, according to the context you're describing. How would you take the curse? Like what does a curse represent in that? You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So a couple of things. First, uh, there's a question of who the curse is actually on, right? We all talk about it as being the curse of Ham, right? Because, uh, you know, in the story, Ham seems to be the one who does it. And yet when Noah actually goes to curse him, it's Canaan, right? He says, cursed be Canaan. Hmm. Right. Um, now, we know who Canaan is, right? Canaan is, rep stands for the Canaanites. And there's nothing weird in that case uh, from a, the perspective of a biblical author, right? An Israelite biblical author to conceive of Canaan as being like, of wanting to curse Canaan, right? Canaan is Israel's constant enemy, right? Right. Uh, uh, so like, you can understand that. The curse of Ham stuff, right? When you make it Ham, right? Ham is not uh, Canaan, one of the nations, right? Ham is one of the like progenitors of a whole range of human beings, right? Back in the previous, in, in Genesis, uh, or in the next chapter in Genesis 10, right? Ham becomes the ancestor of not just Canaan, but importantly, right, all of Africa, 
right? That's how they, the way they conceive of the world is, you know, genetic groupings. And of course, that curse of Ham becomes one of the like backing texts for, you know, defenses of slavery, right? Ham was cursed to be a servant or a slave, right? It's, you know, it's the, you, you shall be a, a slave of slaves shall you be to your brothers is what the curse says. But it says about, about Canaan, right? And people sort of like, don't think about the fact that it says Canaan in the curse and Ham in the, uh, in the, in the narrative. Um, so it's, uh, so my my read on this is that uh, the whole the whole story is really supposed to be about Canaan, um, and there's a curse on Canaan, again, which is not unusual, right? Like, but also is not meant to be. You know, to your point, is an eternal thing. It is supposed to be an eternal, like it's supposed to be a hierarchical thing. Uh, I don't think that I don't think they had in mind right that Canaan would actually like be enslaved by Israel because right. that never happened. Like, not really. Um, it, you know, in the same way, virtually the same language is used of Esau and Jacob, right? When Jacob gets his, when, you know, the story where Jacob steals the blessing, right? Disguises himself as Esau and he goes in and one of the blessings he's get is like, you shall be, you know, ruler over your brothers. Uh, and then when Esau gets his blessing, right, is like, loser blessing as it turns out it's like jacob's like what am i supposed to do man like i already made him master over you right i said right like you know your brothers will serve you there seems to be there seems to be something idiomatic about it right right and you can even tell in the jacob esau one because the jacob esau one it says right you will be you will rule over your brothers and he says, your brother, I already said his brothers would you, would serve him. He's only got one brother. Right. Like, who are the bro so like, there's an idiom here of like, you know, who the preferred child is going to be. Um, like who's receiving the, the, the good blessing. That's probably all that's going on in the, in the, the curses, right? Because it's not just curse of Ham or Canaan, right? It comes with the blessings for his other kids too, right? Noah says, cursed be Canaan, right? Slave of slaves shall be his brothers. And then, you know, blessed be Shem. And, uh, you know, Canaan will serve him. Blessed be, you know, Japheth, like Canaan will serve him. So like, he's, it, it's all part of the same. It's to take one part out and be like, ah, this means that for all time, right? Like the descendants of Ham who live in Africa should be enslaved by, that's, it's not good. Right, like we can wish it weren't in there, uh, but it's definitely not the thing that it's made out to be. So final question in this vein, because this is obviously a huge one. Um, a lot of uh, Americans who had African-American slaves would use the curse of Ham to their advantage. And being someone who is a Hebrew scholar who understands the language. I mean, for crying out loud, you are Jew, right? So like, it's something that you have wrestled with for many years and you know these things in their original tongue. How are they abusing this text, number one? What does it mean about black? Okay, what 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 is going on here in the actual context? Because I'm a firm believer that if you want all these like pseudo concepts and like, everything that's building off of something, just go to the source, understand what it really meant in its initial context. And oftentimes you solve the problem without going through, well, so-and-so John Calvin and like, let's focus on what it meant and what did it mean? Yeah. So first of all, uh, first of all, there's no, they didn't really have the concept of race, right? So like they weren't thinking black and white. Right. Um, uh, right. For them, again, it was all ethnic and geographical. Right. The descendants of Ham are the people who live over there. Right. The descendants of Japheth are the people who live in the Mediterranean. And the descendants of Shem, right, the Semites, are the ones who live over here. Right. Like in our neck of the woods. Um, and there is, you know, there, the, nobody in the Bible talks about people groups in any way really other than where you're from. Not even, who you, not even who do you worship, because who you worship, like which God you worship, depends on where you're from. Right. Right? Like, there's no, um, so it's really, it's very, really much, very much uh, sort of geographical and ethno-geographical, if that's a term. Um, 
so, you know, again, curse, the curse here doesn't mean, um, you know, it is, it is meant to speak to like a long lasting hierarchy. But again, it's just like, we're better than them. Like, but of course the Israelites thought they were better than the Canaanites, right? Like, sure. But again, it's, it's Canaan, not, not all of Africa. Um, uh, and even if it were all of Africa, it doesn't really mean that we are allowed to enslave them. At the same time, that might not be what this is about. But the Bible is actually, there are parts of the Bible at least, where it occurs um, and it comes up, it's pretty clear that you are actually allowed to enslave foreign peoples. Right. But it's not like just the ones from like the descendants of Ham. You can enslave anybody as long as they're not Israelite. Right? Like that's the rule. Um, you know, you go to war and you, you know, conquer some folks, you, you know, you break them, you buy them, right? Like they're yours. Um, uh, and that's a different, that's a wholly different conversation. But I, I do want to get to one of the things you said, which is like, you know, get back to the thing that the source would originally said and not what people said about it. And that's not a, like, that's not how it works, right? Everything is filtered through what we, what we said about it, right? Like nobody is a, no, no one is a, pure biblical believer, right? Like everybody's coming through something, right? And some of us are more, you know, Judaism and Catholicism in particular are a little more open about the fact that like, it's not Bible, it's Bible and like, you know, millennia of tradition that like constitute the shape of our faiths and beliefs. Um, but I mean, you know, even like Luther and Calvin, you know, they're yelling, they're yelling back to the sources, right? Like get, mm -hmm. just get back to the text and here's what I'm going to tell you it means. Right. Right. And like, this is why we have Lutherans and Calvinists, right? Because they have people who understand the text through the lens of a particular, um, you know, interpretation. So uh, there, there is no really like, it's useful, of course, to get back to what the text may have meant in its original context. Mm -hmm. But none of us have been in that context for, you know, 2,500, 3,000 years. Um, the reason it's useful to do that isn't so that we can, like, be biblical believers in some sense. It's so that we can see where we've introduced new interpretations onto the text. So, like, you know, if I tell you that, you know, the curse of Canaan in Genesis 9 isn't really about like validating the enslavement of those from of African descent. And for sure it isn't. Then what that means is like, we can ask the question, like, okay, so when did that become what people thought it meant? Mm -hmm. It doesn't make that, it's not immediately like a wrong interpretation just because it's not the what the original text meant. None of our interpretations are what, the, for, you know, for the most part, what the original text meant, right? Like the way that Judaism understands a text isn't like truer, right? Because it's Jewish, right? Like it's also an interpretation of the, of the text. Uh, in any case, long story short, again, uh, Genesis 9 is a classic proof text for pro-slavery readers, and there are others. Um, but it's, you know, that's obviously not what it was originally about. If at some point we want to have a conversation about like, where does the Bible stand on slavery? If we want to have a conversation at some point about where the Bible stands on slavery, like that's a different conversation, um, of which this is, a, you know, can be a small part, but, uh, in and of itself, this is definitely not like a, it's not a pro- enslavement of other humans text. Thank you.